Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Ciao. I don't even know where to start with this foolishness. Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Reunion Part 3. When I say... Potomac is going down as a whole failure. I, the fans are boycotting. You know, Candace did quit the show. They are asking for Giselle to be fired. And I blame Andy. Hence, why I said villain one and villain two. Okay, now look. I really did. Y'all, look. Let me just go into it. Let's go ahead and get into it. Y'all don't like, comment, share, uh, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media at Jamie's Corner on IED, Twitter, and to the top, okay? Um, Y'all know most of us reviewers have been reviewing Potomac since it started, okay? It wasn't until recently that the season just got stupid, okay? Also, if y'all do not know, go ahead and watch my, my live chat earlier. The Legata chat or whatever, and then go off to watch my review of Good Times. Both of them is up on my channel. Go watch it. Go watch it. Okay, back to these people. A lot of YouTubers have been reviewing how all of the Bravo Housewives shows. I, for one, completely fell off from reviewing because it just it didn't feel right. Okay. Um, this season, I watched here and there, okay? But I feel like I've seen enough of the series, of the season, of everything in between to know who the villain is, okay? Now, Robin comes in a quick villain number three in the background or whatever, but to me, the main villains is, is, uh, is Giselle and Andy because Giselle know exactly what she be doing and for some reason, Andy be allowing her to do it. And as a black woman, child, I don't even have to be from as a black woman, I feel like it's a bunch of bull stuff, okay? Now, I also want to, child, why well, I just realized I commented from my other page. If y'all do not know, I have a secondary page. If, if this page ever goes down, okay, there's a secondary page I have called Julie's Corner Talk, and I did not realize I commented from that page, okay? When I said, child, I've been wrong five minutes, that was me. Anyway, um, my point is, okay, it's weird to me that this three-part reunion literally has everyone pissed. Everyone, okay? I, y'all know, if y'all been following me for a while, I, in Candace's beginning seasons, I was not a Candace 
fan, okay? Candace's mouth, her tears got on my nerves. I feel like Candace at that point in time was a bit immature. Um, but for the past, like, two seasons, I believe, like this season, last season, and maybe the season before that, I think, I know at least last season, I got to liking her because I felt like, you know, she kind of grew up a little bit. I feel like now seeing three parts of this reunion, I said, oh, that's why she quit. They gave her no choice. They gave Candace no choice because y'all not holding any of the dingbacks feet to the fire. Okay, ding, wait, wait, where we at? Ding back. Ding back. Dean Beck, Child Robin, Giselle, and Ashley, the trio, the trifecta of foolishness, of trifleness, of triggeringness, of trying their best to act innocent, and they're the guiltiest of them all. I'm not saying that Candace's mouth is not a weapon that she uses at her leisure. I ain't saying that Candace don't say stuff that get people pissed off. I'm not saying Candace um, is this innocent butterfly. However, Candace is entirely a person who they do keep moving the goalposts. Now, I don't know if it's because of her darker brown skin. I'm not sure yet. What I do know is there is an alignment of light skinness between Robin, Giselle, and Ashley that production that Andy continually ignore the bullshit. Now, we know Candace quit. We assume it has been rumored that Robin was not asked back. They need to fire Giselle, okay? The, this this is the first time I feel like I am fully in agreement. Giselle must go because she sat up on the stage. And look, I'm going to say what it is. Giselle sat up on the stage, used her father's death to get sympathy because it's hard to want to cuss a bitch out who just lost her daddy. Trust me, I know. I, I can feel it. And I feel like every chance she got, she went at Candace for no real reason. I feel like Candace's issue with Giselle is you use... When Chris came, I'm going to cut her part two and part three. Y'all, we're going to be here for a little bit of a minute. And part two, when Chris was talking and Chris said, look, I don't really care about the stuff from last season. I addressed it already. I don't want to address it further, blah, blah, blah. And when Giselle was saying, well, I feel, I feel, I feel. And when Candace said how she felt and Giselle tried to like negate that, Chris said, no, 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 no. You feel how you felt and she has the right to feel how she feels. And also when they always say Candace's words, her words, she has to watch how she say things. And Candace's, Candace's issue with, with Giselle is the words you use against my husband tell the story of him being some kind of sneaky link, some kind of predator, some kind of let me get the cooch. You said things about her husband that meant something by the words you use, okay? And now you acting like you don't understand why she was pissed off. We all know Giselle may have felt, oh, I didn't want him in a room. Fine, fine, fine. But, bitch, you understand why Candace was upset with you. However, they want to, they kept trying to make Candace the villain. But this is the getcha gotcha. They are doing the exact same thing to Candace that they did to Monique. When Monique told them, y'all next, they're going to come for you next. And I felt like no one listened. Because at that point in time, Candace was pissed at Monique. Monique's words have rang true. Giselle and Robin, the dynamic duo of Green Eye Bandit, they, they put fires 
under folks' asses and then act like they didn't like the match. Crazy to me. Even with Wendy, you're now, you're next. You will be the next person up on the Price is Right, get out of Potomac the show. It's crazy to me how production has ignored this problem since season, what, five? After the fight between Candace and Monique, this has been brewing heavily since then. Giselle and Robin has been stewing in the green eyed bandiness since then. Karen also saw it, but Karen isn't in the direct. Karen could handle whatever Giselle and Robin tries to bring her way. Ashley is safe because she's the messy one. They'll use her to, to their will. And she don't care because she got a rich white man paying her bills, even though they're not divorced, okay? She has the protection of the white husband for her. She don't really need this job, okay? this is, She's playing the messy role on this show, so she don't care. You know, she don't care. I feel like this reunion, even with NECA, NECA, how you come in already on a bandwagon and you, you don't even go here. You really up here going at it with Wendy over what? You called that lady mama a witch. You called that lady mama a witch, heifer. When they got to the Wendy versus NECA section, Wendy versus ne the NECA section, and Andy said, you know, initially production wanted NECA to be brought in through Wendy because we were told we knew y'all had mutual friends. Now, we also know on these shows, nobody is really, no one is really friends. You know, you're just introduced through someone. So, oh, I'm the friend of. I'm the friend of, I'm the friend of, okay? But Andy, because it had to kind of break the fourth wall because of the severity of even them bringing up things that are taboo within the Nigerian, um, Nigerian, I don't know, the Nigerians, okay? So Andy's saying, we wanted to bring her in through you, Okay. He then said, and production told me, Wendy, that you weren't really excited. And she said, well, look, production came to me and said, hey, we have someone new. Do you know so-and-so and so-and-so? And I told them I don't know her because I don't know her. It's the exact same thing that happened between Candy and Courtney Crazy Gas on Atlanta. And then what happened? They fussing because Candy really did not know her. But Courtney got offended. The same thing here. Wendy and Aneka do not know each other. They know of each other. But bitch, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Okay. So I feel like Wendy saying, I told her I don't know her. I don't. That's the same thing that Candy said about Courtney on Atlanta. Okay, so when NECA then says, well, you know, I told production that I've met you before and that we have had conversations. To me, that means you told production you know Wendy. But you don't. You know of her. You, you know of her in passing. You have mutual people. There are so many mutual friends, but I don't know you. I know someone you know, but I don't know you. At all, okay. But when Wendy brings up how well you just said, well, then you you told them you knew and, you, and we don't know each other. Period. Okay. Nika to me did get like an attitude. Like, I'm like, why are you so mad, Nika? I'm confused. Why are you so pissed? To me, it, it, not to call a black woman aggressive, but to me, Nika's energy towards Wendy is aggressive. Naneka's energy towards Wendy, at least in this scene, feels like what real beef do y'all have? Does she fuck your husband? Because if she, if, if she banged your husband, I get it. However, it's so petty. 
it's so because in hindsight, nigga, you do not know you did not know Wendy. And when Andy said, Well, for us within production, when someone tells us, Hey, I know of so on, so on, so on, so I know her friend. I don't know. To them, they feel like that means, oh, so and so with production, stop the bull stuff. Okay. Y'all know what it means when someone says, oh, but, but look, I fully believe that NECA played up her knowing Wendy fully, fully, because how she told them, I told production that I, um, that I uh, had, had conversations with you, you know what I'm saying, and that I had met you before. You told them you knew her, and you didn't. That's true. That's what it is. Fine, whatever. Okay, period. Done, done, done. But the back and forth between them two, to me, ain't on Wendy. It's on NECA. To me, people felt like Wendy was lying about something, and it was something, something and it wasn't. It was as simple as somebody I don't know, somebody I do not know, who I know through my sister's friend, is telling the people at my job, she know me. At, at my job, I don't refer anybody who I don't know directly because you don't want to bring anyone into your job, get them hired, and they're a, a mass murderer. You know, you don't want to bring any, you don't want to be the person to bring the bad apple in, I don't know you. I don't know you, ma'am. It is that simple. And to me, NECA played that up and made that a thing. And then Wendy just said, was on the defense the rest of the season. The, the rest of the season. Because my mom is the witch. We're doing voodoo shrines and this and that and that and this. And to me, NECA kept adding more and more and more to cause conflict. Why? Because she needed something to be on the show. She had to have something to be on the show. Simply that. It's that simple. And I, that's why I wrote a comment. Candace quit. Candace was not fired. If anybody believed they did not want Candace back next season, a bit delusional, they wanted her back next season. Trust and believe. Okay. Anyway, I'll leave that be. When they get to Ashley, where's she at? When they get to Ashley, because let's not forget, Ashley was the one bringing up the old school stuff, Seneca, about Wendy. And when they, I love the fact that when Andy and them asked Ashley, why did you even bring, like, what was, what was your intention of even bringing it up? And when Wendy said, and like, what do you even know about it? The fact that, Ash, and I love that Wendy, did, Wendy, did, I love that Wendy did not allow Neca to answer for Ashley. Because when she said, well, I don't really know what it means. I, I admit I don't know what it means. I just knew, I knew it was something culturally insensitive. Okay. I had heard it from someone else. And then I brought it up to Neca. Why? Because she's a messy bitch. That's why. Because for me, if I don't know what something means in somebody else's culture, I'm not bringing it up to anybody else unless I bring it up to that person. Because you have now started a beast between the, the, the tribe of the Nigerians that's something taboo. Okay. And when all the night during on stage, when, when Wendy, Neca, and Neca's husband all said collectively, the Osu thing is something that is extremely taboo. No one speaks on it. You want to know why? Because they understand it and as it does not. And the fact that she brought, she started that shit. And I love the fact that Wendy held Ashley's feet to the fire. Like, yeah, you brought it up. You started it. The conversation started through you, bitch. And why? What was your intention? Well, I had no intention. Her, she always says, "I Ashley is the shit starter. She is the bone carrier. 
she don't care what drama she starts with. That's a job because she would drop a bomb and then walk away. She will say stuff that's not fully true. Well, I thought, I assumed, I didn't know. And I'm like, why is this? Why? 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 And that's why people are pissed at this damn show. Again, look, villain one and villain two. Because as Ashley is stirring the pot between Wendy and NECA, Giselle is sitting up there. Yeah, must be something crazy. Yeah, Wendy's a bad person. Yeah. Ooh. Wendy and then production who should see this is something that is culturally inappropriate to be fodder for bullshit arguments and y'all let y'all would not show the fight on the screen but y'all want to show two night union women fussing about what nothing really all because production wanted to make it seem like oh they no no at this point, we don't y'all don't have to introduce anybody as someone's friend. We know they're not friends. We know they're not friends. And when Wendy said, look, at the because I we not we fuck with who so okay. At the end of the day, Wendy said, look, I can coexist with her. Okay, I can coexist with her and move on. Okay, because to me. Wendy did not have no big issue, really. To me, Wendy's issue was, oh, Neka said I, I'm, I'm, uh, what is it? What, Neka said I am also, and that wasn't true. Kathy brought that shit up again. And he started something, and then once Wendy was upset, Neka ran with the upsetness to the point to where. Why didn't they discuss? Why did you bring up that that Wendy's husband allegedly unfollowed her husband? How did you know where it was following? What? She kept making new issues with Wendy to make it seem as if Wendy doesn't want me around. Wendy wants to separate me from the group. I was like the group, baby, like Wendy. The group barely likes Wendy. Winnie is holding on by the skin of her teeth in this group. Why? Because the Green Knight Bandits don't like Wendy either. But their focus this season was not liking Candace. So they didn't have full time to not like Wendy. They still not liked her. They still did not like her, okay? However, the main priority was let's not like Candace. And when Neka said she was attacking me all season, you know what I'm saying? She tried to ice me out, you know, from the group, from the, from, from the whole world. Bitch, we don't know. Wendy don't know you, and we don't need them at all, okay? At one point, Neka brought up how we were first approached to be on Married to Medicine because her husband's a doctor. And then they said, well, no, we had this other show, and then they pitched them for Potomac. Um, because again, we know production it be reaching out to people to be on these shows. So I'm looking like, girl, y'all were looking to be on a show. Once production reached out, you want you wanted to be on some kind of show, and you got on this and you caused a fight with Wendy. Period. And when Wendy said, "Look, I said what I said. Okay, we can coexist. <laughs> I'm going to move on." At one point, it brought up how. Um, you know, because Neka called her mama a witch, and then Wendy called her crackhead. Look, if you call my mama a witch, it's possible that you would be you may be a crackhead. Okay, period. Anyway, so that made me mad. But even how the episode starts off, let's get to Mia and Gordon because the part two ended with the guys coming out and Gordon about to reveal some, you know, big, dark, uh, I won't say, see, but, but something, you know. And he then says that he's, he reveals he's been current, well, recently diagnosed with bipolar one, 
and I had to Google it. And so I was like, said, what is this bipolar one disorder defined by manic episodes that last for at least seven days, nearly every day for most of the day, or by manic symptoms that are so severe that the person needs immediate medical care? Usually depressive episodes occur as well, typically lasting at least two weeks. So Gordon said he was diagnosed two years ago. I said, so you were diagnosed before coming on the show or or, or quickly after coming on the show? So, but y'all have known that he's bipolar this whole time. Again, to me, Mia has been hiding pieces and chips of her life con continuously because now you we did not know Gordon had was bipolar, which had so him and his manic episode. You and the, the 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 ink dude, okay. How Gordon really was not rich, was kind of cash poor, okay. So to me, all the stuff that Mia came on the show in the beginning claiming this happy amazing marriage she loves her old ass husband the sex is great you know he pays my surgeries and his it's his money and blah 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 none of that shit is true none of it and now Mia who be lying is coming clean and Gordon's Gordon subsequently is too so he was like you know I I now realized I was I was I had this back in my 20s um, but I did not know back then or whatever. And it got worse over the years as I got more money, I got more control, I got more power. My manic episodes got worse and worse and worse. But I did not know I was bipolar until, you know, recently. You know, now Gordon's still sitting around there singing Mia's praises. Look, child. I feel like marriage really is supposed to be through good, bad, sickness, health, so death was part, blah, blah, blue. And it do seem like things are tough right now. Mia's done. She's over dealing with her husband who's bipolar. He's having these many episodes and blah, blah, blue. You know, he said how I feel like had I got help sooner, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, we could have been together still, okay? And that she, I, I know she, she's leaving me because she could not take dealing with me anymore and my manic bipolarness. And I, I, look, I, I don't feel like that's wrong. I do feel like sometimes you get tired of dealing with shit and you don't know what's going on. But I also feel like bullshit. I also feel like Gordon had money. Gordon had access to money. Mia liked having Gordon's access to money. Um, I feel like once she got on the show, Mia now has her own money. She don't really need Gordon like she did before. So she, I'm, he on some bullshit. He old. Okay, fuck. I, I might as well leave. I thought like it's not as simple as well. He's been mad at because it, it, he's been mad at their whole marriage. The whole time. The whole time. And the fact that he's so clearly explaining, we know what's wrong now. And I, I now have it under control. However, she she just got tired and left me. I was like, because, because your money ran out. Because your family took you off the account because you're bipolar because he did bring up how he now currently he has a great uh connection to the family you know what i'm saying how they put him out of the business because he was in a manic episode or whatever and they had a child sit him down over there sit him over there so I'm like, once they no longer had the access to the family's money, the job she worked that made money through them, Mia was like, it's not worth it. He ain't fucking me. He not paying no bills. Why should I stay with him? And he, and, and he my father, bitch, I gotta go. And my old man back around here and with my coach, I'm leaving. Period. And I'm like, Accept that. 
because you will find with his bad manic shit because you had access to the money and now you don't and once the family saw okay he is no longer manic he is he has he's getting under control he and mia are divorcing so she don't she won't get any of the money come on back in the fold brother come on back in the fold brother But I'm like, you was diagnosed two years ago, roughly two years ago, but not me and Lisa. And she had a whole new boyfriend who she was already having an affair with before because he thought y'all son was his. Mia was like, I cannot deal with all this stuff without no money. <laughs> before, I think you know, it it made sense to because she had money to calm herself down from his bullshit. And I think once he no longer had control of money, it probably did get worse. You know, um, but child, whatever. Because we know if this show needs to have a whole hiatus, the same way they did Atlanta. Where after the reunion they took a, a long pause because y'all know they they still not shooting Atlanta yet. Okay, they still not shooting Atlanta, the Housewives of Atlanta. This show needs to take a whole pause. And if they come back and if they bring me back, which I'm, I, I, I assume they will, let's see how her and the Ink dude doing. Okay, let's see if that shit works out. Because it's all fun and game when y'all y'all in different states. It's just sex here. It's, 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 it's real fun. Put them in the same house, in the same space, but he has to be dead, daddy daycare. Do that. Okay, do that. Um, I like the fact that Wendy, because they talk about Wendy, her little, her little talk show on YouTube. I like that, that Wendy said, you know, it is hard. <laughs> I did not think it would be so hard. I think people assume YouTube is easy. And, okay, I'm on a show. I guess I got a talk show on YouTube or whatever, and it will come easily, and it won't. I like that she said, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. I, I did not know. Child, hard. And it's harder for us who don't have your platform, okay? But I'm going to leave that be. Um... She also brought up how it will be her last year teaching because her kids are getting older. Um, she feels like she missed so much of their childhood or whatever that she wants to stop missing out. Boom, pow, pow. Um, now the fight. Uh, now the the Kiara girl. I didn't get her picture because I didn't care. Um, watching the the flashbacks and seeing in confessionals. Mainly at the ass. It said, oh my God, you know, Candace and her mouth was saying, you know, I can't believe that and why she picked up a bottle, and blah, blah, blah. Now, even though um the show did not air the actual fight, we all synced it. We seen we synced it when it happened. Because and, and that's also why, because I was watching something. I was watching somebody on YouTube and they were saying how. When we see these events sometimes, how you don't see a whole bunch of people is because you want to be able to, to be able to control the atmosphere. This event, which happened at like a public club or whatever, and the fact that when cameras went down, somebody was recording it, posted it on social media. So production and the show had no control over keeping it on the low okay we seen what we had to see now this is my perception of the fight now that we've seen the footage of it the aftermath of it conversation this and that and then this i still feel deborah was the main culprit deborah came there with an agenda I believe that wholeheartedly. Do I believe she came to fight? I don't think she came to fight, but I think she came to make a scene. I do. I fully do. In my opinion, in my opinion, 
Mia said that night that Deborah approached her like, oh, I'm a four. I'm a four. Because Deborah was called a four by, by Mia last season. And she said, you know, she approached me and said, oh, I'm a four. And she said, I replied. I said, no, you're beautiful. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're beautiful. Um, she said, so I, so it was squash, okay? I like that Mia told Candace, you, we have to, to get, we all have too much to lose. And sometimes it's not worth the, the argument. Deborah came trying to fuss with me. And I said, no, girl, you're beautiful. Because if I had met her energy, it could have went left, okay? Now, the fact that Mia is also the same person who tossed a drink on Wendy, bitch, we didn't forget. You still Deborah because you tossed a drink on Wendy and they still felt like Wendy's words was the culprit of the drink being tossed. Again, they keep moving the goalposts. In this instant, um, Deborah approaching Candace because she wanted screen time. Okay. Um, to me, when Deborah tossed the drink on Candace, Candace never hit Deborah. Candace was her back was turned, drink tossed on her, and she turned. By the time Candace turned around, Deborah and the key and the girl was already fighting. To me, I blame Deborah first. Deborah, listen to listen to me now. I blame Deborah first. I also blame Kiana because that's who was fighting. Candace didn't fight. Wendy didn't fight. Hell, even Ashley did not fight. Now, Ashley's to blame because you should have never in invited that girl, period, because she's messy. You see she messy. So Candace, I mean, not Candace, Ashley, you're at fault because you, you invited her. But to me, Deborah, main culprit, guilty, guilty, guilty for the shit. I also blame Kierna only because, only because when the drink was tossed on Candace, Kierna hand, you know, went in Deborah's face, and that's what started the fight. That does not mean that Deborah, that does not mean that Deborah was not wrong. It does not mean that Deborah did not come and start shit. What it means is Deborah was dead as wrong, period. I, I always sit, I wonder if Karen had never mushed Deborah in the face, would a fight have ensued? If somebody would have just grabbed Karen back, not Karen, grab Deborah back and then separated the people, I still wonder what a fight would have happened. Again, hear me now, because I, what you mean? Because y'all don't like to listen. Don't like to listen. The drink being tossed on Candace. Okay. Candace turns, picks up a bottle. They get the bottle out of her hand. You then see Kieran in her hand go to Deborah's face. After her hand went to Deborah's face, Deborah's other hand came around and hit Kieran in the head. Why? Because the same glass that Deborah had in her hand emptying the drink on them was in her hand still. And she swung, boop, hit Kieran. That's how the fight started. That's how, that's why I, it pissed me off that people are blaming Candace. When she didn't do shit with the fight, she turned around like, what the hell? Why, why is that on me? And y'all know, as a YouTuber, I have had to watch that fight over and over and over in slow motion, fast forward, slow down, rewind, and all of that. So when I tell y'all, I have watched it piece by piece by piece, blowing it up. Zooming in, zooming out. That's exactly again. And as I said, Deborah is the wrong culprit in general. You know what I'm saying? However, in addition to Deborah being dead as wrong, if if Kiana had never just 
swung her hand that hit Deborah. And as she's swinging it in Deborah, her face, Deborah's other hand is coming around and she hits. Because that, that's how fight starts. Tammy Roman said, keep your hands down. Because when there is a situation where any one hand goes up, a fight ensues. Hence, the fight between Candace and Monique. While they're bickering, Robin and Giselle hands. And all that shit, which hit Monique. Then Monique swung on Candace. And then chop. It, it, it. People, keep your hands down when you're fussing. But the fact that they round here trying to make it seem as if, well, Candace, you know, Deborah was upset because you caught her vermin. So what? She called her fucking sexy. Don't look. Words, to me, vermin is not a fightable word. Okay, period. And let's not forget, Deborah did not fight Candace. She fought Kiana. Period. So how can y'all try to blame Candace when she did not even get in the fight? So what did they do? Oh, well, Candace picked up a bottle. Now, even I said Candace could put the bottle down. Don't you be out here debrat no damn bottle. Okay, the brat hit somebody in the head too, and she so no. Bottle down, okay. Even I said, Candace, girl, don't pick up no bottle at all. However, Candace was not the was not fighting. Candace has had worse things to people in general. So I don't feel like Candace did anything wrong in this Candace issue was. Ashley, you have a bitch around here who told y'all my husband was slurching with her and he wasn't. And when production proved she was a liar, you got this bitch in my face. Somebody get this varmint <laughs> out of my face. Get this. <laughs> Candace has said worse thing. So y'all, even Karen was like, why would you call her a vermin? Why would you? Because she was. Get this bitch out of my face. Get this out of child. And then when Giselle, I feel like Deborah, Candace, and Wendy, and everyone, it, bitch, what? How did Wendy get in it? When Giselle said Candace and Wendy, I said, bitch, what? Wendy was breaking it up. Candace did not even fight anybody. But Ashley invited a girl. The person that Ashley invited, who has issues with both Wendy and Deborah, I'm sorry, has issues with both Wendy and Candace. Why is no one saying, Ashley, why did you even invite her here? And I get that's her friend. Bitch, you at work. You are at work. I don't invite my friends to my job if I know they have beef with my coworkers. Why? Church and state. You keep it separate. Keep it separate. Okay? So I feel like they keep trying. They kept trying. When, no, Wendy, uh, Giselle, Robin, even me, Mia, Candace, you can't do that. No, you can't call that. Bitch, I can. Shut up, uh, Mia. Them trying to make it seem like, oh, well, because you call her Vermin, you know, that's what that ain't what started it. Deborah came there with a with an axe to grind. Now, again, I'm not gonna say she came to fight, but she came to argue for sure. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, why would you know, bitch? What? And then when they said Wendy wasn't even, well, I'll take back Wendy. But you won't take it back, Candace. Well, you know, having a, a, an event for your 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 clothing, which we ain't gonna buy, you know, and having to be on TMZ because a brawl happened. Your partner invited the person who started the brawl. How are you not pissed at Abby? The person that your partner invited to the event started a fight. And I'm like, y'all are really asking Candace why. She called her some names. Candace called all y'all names all season. 
all in the y'all y'all call each other names. That's what she and this the and I agree. Candace, like I'll use my words. Not not now. I'm a, I'm gonna also say this too, Candace. Words can cause a fight. They can. I've heard and when Candace is antagonizing somebody, that's when I can I can see shit escalating. But from what we saw, that's not what happened. Candace was not even at her worst anti antagonizing stage and fussing. That was mild. So how do y'all blame her? When Candace said to Monique, smack me, Monique, smack me. That's asking for it. When she said, smack me, Monique, okay. And she gets back. That's when your words can cause somebody to hit you. It does not make it right. It does not make it right. But that's not, I'm like, hey, you ask? You ask? Boy, what do you want me to do? But this in this situation, she wasn't trying to antagonize to start something. You know, th that wasn't this. This is a completely different situation than what happened with Monique. Completely different because Monique and Candace were, were, were in each other's faces arguing and it was escalating. Actively, that's not what this was. Ken, Ken was, was saying, Get her out of my face. I, I have nothing to say to you. Get out of my face, ma'am. Get out of here. She was technically trying to de escalate in her own way, <laughs> if you ask me. Okay, so the fact that Karen, not Karen, we are Karen, you know, because Karen asked why the names, Mia asked the names. Robin and Giselle. So I'm like, fuck all y'all. Because y'all are really trying to make it seem as if that's why Candace quit. Because she was on that stage alone. Now, I feel like Wendy had her back. Karen at times would, you know, play referee. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, Candace was, was, was on a branch all by her lonesome on a windy ass day and hoping a branch did not break. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like when she said the, the goalposts always get moved with me, and it does. In this situation, it does. Now, when Andy asked Athy, well, why did you and your confessional say that Candace's mouth, you know, goes too far? And because the goalposts keeps me moving. And I'm like, Athy, you invited Deborah. And when she, well, I don't know Deborah to be violent. And now I'll give her that. Okay. Maybe you don't, because it, and she said we only had play dates or whatever. She's a, a mother, mom, friend of mine, okay? I didn't know her to be violent. You do now. And you may not have known her to be violent, but you know she starts shit. You know she starts shit. So to me, production and Ashley all wanted Deborah to start shit. That's why she was invited. Everyone wanted her to start shit. I do not believe anyone thought a fight would happen, like a physical fight. I think they thought it may be this random ass drama, you know, like it was that season. And but as he's saying, well, I don't know how to be violent by, by the person. I did not think would happen. Um, Deborah told me that she wanted to clear the air. I say, bitch, what? That means I want to cut somebody out, okay. It's crazy, you know. And again, I, I look, I do not believe anyone thought a physical fight would happen. I do not believe that. I do believe they thought an argument may happen. I do think they thought it would be a scene, but the same as any other argument. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, you know, that child is a, a lot of shit around here. But this whole reunion, I feel like, I sneeze, I feel like they kept trying to force Candace to be the bigger person, to apologize to Giselle, to apologize to, to Robin, okay, to um take the hit for the fight. And oh, I was like, why the fuck is Candace the one out here 
having to be on a combo. And, and again, I I just started liking her maybe last season because <laughs> she got on my nerves her first couple seasons completely on my nerves. Um, but this, when she said to them, um, cause they asked him, and he said like, would you, would you have hit her with the bottle? And when she said, I can't expect any of y'all to fight for me. So I'm on my own. I have to defend myself. And I turned around and saw somebody lunging at me. And while I feel, but well, that also means she can't fight. Um, I feel like I fully understood her feeling like no one here has my back and no one at that event had my back in her head and the fact that Deborah is there trying to even try to even fuss with her and she's lunging at me so a drink is tossed on me I grabbed the first thing I thought why because she can't fight girl Kim can't fight she can't so I believe she did pick up a weapon because she felt like if someone attacked me, I need something to help me not get beaten up. I don't think she thought it through. Like if you hit her with that bottle, bitch, you want to prison. Ask the rat, okay? Um, but I still, I still fully understand why she grabbed the bottle. To me, it was a this, it was a reflex. You know, and her getting teary eyed and I don't expect any of y'all to have my back. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's true. It's true. Even on part two, when Giselle spoke about her father dying, and Candace was crying because it's sad when somebody is emotional about their daddy dying. Why? Because you like, damn, my daddy gonna die. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact that Candace could not even show emotion. For Giselle, who was being emo and Giselle was never emotional. So even the fact that Candace was getting teary-eyed because Giselle was, to me, everyone on the stage was 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 whimpering in, in their own way while she discussed her daddy. And when Andy said, What well, well, Candace, I'm just, you know, why are you crying? And she said, you know, it's just, you know, I feel for her. And for Giselle, old tack had to say, you know, it's always about her. Bitch, mine was see. This is the thing. And it's going to sound mean, but I don't care. Candace and Giselle are not on good terms. Candace still felt bad for Giselle grieving the loss of her father. And so she got tear died, whatever. For Giselle to make it seem like, well, see, it's always about her. That's why Wendy said, bitch, well, my mama was sick in the hospital, whatever. You call her or whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't, I have, I have nothing for you because even in a time where we not cool, Candace still cared and was showing feeling. And you basically told her, fuck her. So when Wendy said, I have no feeling. Cause we ain't that. That's why. Cause bitch, if I do, you you still spill, you still spit my face. And if I was up there getting teary eyed about her her daddy, and she then said, "See, it's always like fuck you, fuck you, fuck your daddy." Then how about that? That would have been my reply. Because if you can't accept me showing that I genuinely feel bad, I, I feel because they were friends. If you can't accept that I feel bad that you lost your dad and I'm seeing you be emotional about that, you want to make that be a negative about me? Well, fuck you and fuck your daddy. It's what I would have said. <laughs> that would have been my reply because Giselle has a way on this reunion to where she felt like no one's acknowledgement or apology or explanation on, on how they felt and, and, and why they felt some kind of way, she never accepted that. She only made it be, well, whatever, or well, whatever, or well, whatever. Like, 
the fact that Candace, like the word you use against my husband, it hurt me. And I was upset. So this is where we at. Okay. Giselle never wanted to say, you know what? The way I said things, I could have worded it differently. Giselle never, this whole reunion, took any accountability for the bullshit she did this season or last season. And that's why Giselle needs to be fired. Even though Candace won't be on next season, Giselle don't need to be either. Giselle needs to be held accountable for her bullshit. Period. Even Robin old tack head ass. Robin and the whole child, the fact that wine is wine coming? No, never. Um, the fact that wine ain't there. Robin wanna make a scene with it because at, at, at the end of the reunion, we were talking about whatever. Candace was like, Well, Robin said the the friendship was done, you know. So if something was to come from that, it would have to be moving on her end because she said she's done. And Robin trying to make it seem like she can't, well, she may be dumb, can't comprehend, but she can't comprehend. Robin wholeheartedly, I don't think Robin was fake in supporting Candace and, and, and Chris. I think she did it because she did not believe Chris, you know, did whatever with Giselle. But also because it kept people off her back. And that's true. And she won't admit that. So she has to stay mad at Candace. Because she can't get mad at Juan. He's a roommate. So the fact that both Robin and Giselle set up on that stage, the whole reunion, and never once it just acknowledged, okay, all of us have said something or done something in our anger, and we should be able to move forward from this. They found no resolve. You want to know why? Because Robin and Giselle didn't want to. Because Ashley sat there and was the cause of NECA and Wendy being beat out. And she didn't get called out enough to me, okay? Karen may have been sitting first chair, but she ain't do much of shit, if you ask me. First chair should have been, if I told y'all, if, if Juan would have showed up, Robin would have sat first chair and Candace could have been first chair too. It could have been Candace on one side and Robin on the other. Then it would have been Mia and Giselle and, and so forth. So I feel like Candace is not this innocent, delicate bird victim. I don't think that at all. However, I can fully understand how things keep being this season and a little bit last season. She's the villain. You want to know why? Because of Robin and Giselle. Child, look. When Giselle said at the end, I can't wait for this day. I say, bitch, you got your wish. You got your wish. Because it aired. And the, the child, the reviews are in. And it's a no. It's a no. You look dumb. You look dumb, dumb, dumb. You want not Robin up there manless, okay? And she's a whole wife. And your own cheating husband can't come and stand up for you. And you up here trapped. Robin and Giselle took all of their frustration out on Candace. Let's blame Candace. Let's blame Candace. Let's blame Candace. And that's it. And that don't sit well with me. This show, the reason I stopped reviewing because it wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't fun anymore. The commenters on the on the in the in the the comment section was horrible to us, YouTubers or whatever. I said I don't have time. I do not have time or whatever. I, I just don't. The show no longer was fun. The show, even last episode where the amazing conversation that Wendy and Candace said 
when they talk about colorism. And because Robin, when I'm upset, I can't believe you, know, you, you saying you're close with the whitest, and that, that affected me. And I could, Robin, the fact that you don't know how to have a conversation about race and that makes you uncomfortable, you want to know why? Because of your proximity to whiteness. Most black people don't have an issue having a conversation about race, colorism. And when Wendy said, Karen said there is no better group of women to have the conversation about colorism than us. And Wendy said bullshit. And two of y'all are ready to, it's, it's not about, oh, why call me this? The conversation is why is that narrative even a conversation? You're not even asking why we think you're a colorist. You can't even have that conversation. And for Karen, light skinness of it all and her blind wig to say, we're the perfect group. To no, Robin just told y'all she is uncomfortable talking about race. Having someone call her a colorist made her uncomfortable because she's not used to having that kind of conversation. And when, when Candace said, in my household growing up, we had those conversations and it was it was nothing. My bad, and I felt like y'all could too. The only people on this day that can probably properly talk about race and, and that stuff is, is um Candace, Wendy, and Karen. That's it. Not NECA, because NECA was up at beefing with Wendy for nothing. Not Anthony, because child, she don't know what she is. And these two hoes over here have been denying their proximity to whiteness since season one. And the fact that Giselle and 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 and, and Wendy are aka sisters, I'm like, bitch, do y'all beef at the at the meetings? And, and the fact that half the time Giselle and Kim, Giselle and Robin sat there wondering or just not saying shit because they had no response. Because when, I, when Wendy said, child, they not even trying to have a conversation asking, why am I being looked at as a colorist? She said, well, she compared this to someone saying, oh, my God, I cannot believe someone thinks I'm racist. And no one asked the question, but why? Do they think you're racist? That's the question. That's the question. Ah, uh -huh. that's the question. And so this isn't the proper platform for them to have it. Oh, but let's let's get to Andy. Okay, because I told y'all we have villain one and villain two. Andy, sir, you are not equipped to host a reunion of black women. You are not equipped to have a conversation of black women who are in discourse with each other because you left shit on the table that should have been explained, okay? You exclusively did not hold Giselle and Robin's feet to not to nail fire, but you kept asking the others to do so. Mainly Candace. Now, I don't know what was cut out. I don't know what was left on the cutting room floor. I don't know. What we saw, Andy, you are not equipped to do it. There needs to be a change in who hosts the reunions. Because Andy should have stopped hosting the Potomac reunion after the Monique fight, probably during the Monique fight. And when they brought on Nicki Minaj, that wasn't it. Even Nicki Minaj, in my opinion, is the wrong black woman to have on the stage asking questions. Nicki Minaj was a prop. That was a prop to distract folks from the bullshit going on in the Potomac realm. Okay? Get you Nina Parker. Hell, get Mona Scott Young. Because Mona, Mona Beach and, her, and my uh, rock boys, you know what I'm saying? 
somebody you need to have a black woman hosting this all of the black women shows. You wonder why a white gay man can easily talk to the white women if 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 you ask me. You know what I'm saying? However, there are conversations amongst black people that it don't work like that. He should not even host Beverly Hills. Andy has too close of a relationship with the cast to keep hosting. He has his faves. He has who he ignores and all of that. He don't need to do it. Come on now, yes, Amanda Seals. Absolutely. Hold the feet to the fire. Andy, when he used to host in the beginning, it made sense. Now it's a no. I don't watch Jersey. I don't watch New York. I don't watch OC anymore. So I don't know the climate in those realms to see if Andy, if that works for him. However, for Major Medicine, Atlanta, Potomac, and even Beverly Hills, Andy should not be the host. Should not be at all. Because sometimes he'll sit there and not say shit simply because he don't know what to say. And he don't want to say the wrong thing. And I appreciate him knowing sometimes to shut the fuck up. Sometimes he disagrees with great points, but he don't know how to follow up because he's a white gay man. And he's just not equipped to have these kind of conversations. And to me also, the colorism conversation does not need to be one segment of a three-part review. No, 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 no. There needs to be a, a six-episode special dealing with colorism issues in Potomac on the show. Bring in some good old therapist, okay, and something. But when I tell you villain one and villain two has completely ruined the show, it is going down, okay? There is, the people are wanting to boycott the show. And they mean it this time. Candace quit the show. Giselle absolutely needs to be fired. Next season, they can't think, oh, we'll just, we'll just, you know, no, no, no. we need some new shit. Some complete new shit. And if you don't do it, folks won't watch. Folks just won't watch. They need to get rid of Robin, Ashley, and Giselle. Simple as that. Even if they just pause Giselle and Abby for like two seasons. If they just pause them for two seasons, that's fine. Next season, to still bring Giselle back or to bring Ashley back or to bring Robin back would be a travesty. They need new blood. Or else they will run into what happened in New York where they had to do a full recasting or what they're going through now in Atlanta where they had to take this long hiatus and they can't even... We have never had to take this long to announce who was coming back because it was too... It was bad shit. They're there now. This is worse than Atlanta. This is worse than Atlanta because y'all caused this lady to quit because she felt ostracized. And again, Candace is not an innocent baby bird victim. She isn't. But in, on this season, they fully pushed her to where she felt like, I can't stay. I have nobody. No one will, will protect me. And the whole time, everyone expects me to be the bigger person. And no one expects the green-eyed bandits to be called out for their antics. Again, I don't care what nobody say. 
they are to blame for the fight between Monique and Candace. They are. They have been pulling puppet strings since then. They got Monique out. They got Katie out. They now got Candace out. Wendy's next. It's that simple. Because Wendy don't have allies on the show at all. Even when they asked Candace and, and Wendy, well, why didn't y'all reach out to Mia? We not Mia friend. We not Mia friend. At all. Anyway, y'all, that's all I have. Okay. Um, I fully feel like Bravo knows they have a problem. I fully feel like Bravo is aware that something has to change. I, feel like, I think they fully see this is different than a few fans being upset. This is different than in past seasons where some people are just a little bit, a little bit upset or whatever. Um, and this is like, no, people are calling for a change for this show or they won't watch. They won't watch. And that's what they don't want. I think Candace quitting is child an eye on a sparrow, letting Jesus know, fix it. Fix it. And again, Monique told them during season five, it's me now. <clears throat> it's going to be y'all next. And Candace, you now see she was right. Wendy, you're next. If y'all back next season, so get your boxing gloves ready. Okay? <sighs> it was a very it was a very triggering season. If you ask me. Um because we I think people even folk who don't like Candace felt like, "Oh, they're really like for lack of a better term, bullying her." At the reunion, at least. You know what I'm saying? Um, trying to force Candace to move forward in some way with the green eye bandits. And she, I like that she said, hey, hells no. Mm -mm. No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Child, all the whole reunion, they sat there like, Like, just not caring. You want to know why? Because they feel like they don't have to do shit. They feel protected. And that's why I said villain one and villain two, okay? Anyway, y'all, do not forget. Go back and check out my review for some, some, some little gossip stuff or whatever. Uh, I also did the review of Good Times and stuff on my channel. Go watch up for those. Um, I'll be back live tomorrow night at 9 p.m. for something. Look, got that or whatever. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. Look, next season, if Giselle or Robin is back, boy, hot. Do not watch. Do don't watch it. Don't leave it be. Okay. Um, we will see how fast they even do season nine. They may need a whole little break, a little six month break. Anyway, y'all, I love you all. We had a good old time in this and whatnot. I will talk to y'all tomorrow at 9 p.m. on the corner, y'all. Be good. Don't be no Giselle and don't be no Andy. And y'all, look, don't look, don't try to go on, on the folks' page and say shit, okay? Don't badger them. Just go ahead and hashtag the Housewives of the Potomac and put your comment there. Because trust and believe, production is watching Twitter, okay? Production is watching what folks are saying. So they don't see the shit, okay? Anyway, I gotta go. I love you all.